Hey guys, I wanted to make a quick video about the two different types of electric motors that you could put on your hand cycle or bicycle. You have uh, either hub motors, which you could see here on the left, or mid-drive motors that you could see on the right. The big difference is that hub motors are directly installed into your wheel. It could be either the front wheel or the rear wheel. And mid drives replace your crank sets and uh, directly drive your chain, um, which then makes your rear wheel um, or your front wheel, in the case of a hand cycle, move forward. Um, there's a bunch of different uh, flavors of these. Uh, here's an example of a geared, smaller hub motor. Um, some are bigger, such as the one in this picture. Um, mid drives, I think there are two big manufacturers that I came across. There's uh, Bafang, which is probably the most popular uh, with the BBSO2, and then there's the TSDZ2 uh, motor. That's a motor I actually found on a different kind of hand cycle, an off-road hand cycle, uh, sold by Adapt Reactive Adaptations in Colorado. They have a hand cycle called the Nuke and they put the TSDZ2 on it. I think one big reason is because it has a built-in torque sensor, which is a really useful sensor for uh, naturally translating the biker's intent into um, the motor moving forward. So the harder you push, um, the more the motor, more power the motor puts out, which, which leads to a very natural um, kind of human slash e-bike or motor um, uh, uh, relationship. It's, it's, it's not like where you have to have a throttle, but you constantly have to push to go up the hill, which is nice. So um, this is a pretty nice article on electric here. I can link to it from the video. Um, uh, but I tried to summarize a lot of the pros and cons and, and other pros and cons that I found in my research for each. Um, so starting with mid drives up top, um, the biggest benefit by far for mid drives is the fact that you can use gears to modify how much torque or how fast the, the bike is going. Um, this, this is one of the big reasons why they are good for hill climbing is you could always switch to an easy gear and then the motor will push you up the, 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 the hill. Or if you're going on flats or going downhill, you could switch into a harder gear, in which case the motor is going to help you achieve a high top speed. Um, from what I could also tell, a lot of these mid drives have a lot more components integrated into the motor. Um, so in the case of that TSDZ2, there was uh, a torque sensor, controller, and motor are all one piece. Um, and uh, because the motor is is a geared motor, um, which means that it's not the the motor is going to spin at a high speed, and then there's going to be some kind of a plenary gear reduction to ultimately uh, uh, rotate the chain ring at a small, at a slower speed that allows them to be a lot more, uh, compact, uh, and you can pack in, uh, a controller on top of that and a torque sensor all in one place. I think that should ultimately lead to less wiring. Um, although I've seen, uh, uh, a hand cycle actually with a mid drive motor that had a, a massive amount of wires, but a lot of those were for, uh, assistive devices that helped the user, for instance, uh, change gears um, with their head. Um, uh, uh, so so um, the amount of wiring can, I think, vary a lot from, from setup to setup. Um, uh, as far as the cons for the mid-drive, uh, the biggest by far is there are more points of failure, uh, which can lead to more maintenance. Um, as I mentioned, they are geared motors, so the gears can wear out. Uh, the, um, the, the, the chain can break, um, the derailleur can snap off if, if you apply too much torque when you're switching gears. Um, uh, so it's a lot, makes it a lot easier to misuse, which can lead to failure. And, uh, in the case of a hand cycle, it's actually more difficult to install one of these motors. And, uh, the, the, the big reason why is, um, at least my, Hand cycle has this uh, chain ring uh, protector here. It's it's actually attached to a piece of metal that is welded onto the 
um, uh, the, the, the crankshaft. So uh, you need to cut that piece of metal off and shave down the metal to be able to install uh, uh, a mid-drive motor, which would be a pain in the butt. In addition to that, if you'll notice, this um, uh, this crankshaft is, is actually welded on in a variety of different ways to um, to this 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 headset right here. And uh, I've I've actually talked to somebody that has installed uh, a mid-drive motor on a top end force three, and they said that um, this this piece actually flexes if the user applies a lot of torque to the motor. So for instance, if you're trying to start and you're not in the right gear, um, you could actually potentially snap off this piece and break these welds, which worried me quite a bit. So that in addition to the fact that the chain can break and uh, the fact that it's gonna require a decent amount of, uh, of work to just install it, I ended up deciding to go with a hub motor, which has a lot of pros, some cons, um, but the biggest one, biggest pro is the fact that it is a lot more robust and has a lot less moving parts. Um, hub motors are actually split into two different categories. I'm going to go into those details in my next video, but they could either be geared or direct drive. Direct drive motors have absolutely no gears inside of them, so nothing will really wear out. And because it's all basically hermetically sealed, um, it, uh, it, it, it requires almost no maintenance. Um, in the case of direct drive motors, you could have regenerative braking, which would allow you to actually uh, set a maximum speed as you descend down the hill. Uh, being somebody that got injured in a downhill um, uh, uh, road bike accident, uh, that, that seems like a nice feature that I wanted to leverage. Um, hub motors can also be more efficient. There's a lot less moving parts and every single time you go from one gear to another gear to a chain that can stretch, you're going to lose efficiency. So hub motors can, can ultimately have a higher efficiency. Um, they can be less expensive. Some of the, the geared hub motor kits on Amazon are very high volume. Uh, they install them on millions of bikes and you could get a very good deal on a complete kit with uh, the rim hub motor, controller, display, torque uh, sensor or pedal assist sensor, um, uh, throttle, uh, e-brake levers, everything for I think under, and the battery for under 700 bucks, which is, is actually a really good deal. Um, and uh, uh, these, these hub motors may be easier to install. In the case of, a hand, of my hand cycle, it should be significantly easier to install. If you have a regular bike and you install it on the front wheel, uh, I've seen videos of, of people demonstrating installs in, in under 30 minutes. Um, as far as the cons, the biggest by far is that it's a single speed. So unlike a mid-drive, you can't change gears and change either if you're going for a high torque situation or a top speed situation. You kind of have to pick your motor and uh, um, usually it'll either be better at high speeds or maybe it'll have more torque, but then it'll have a low top speed. Um, so you're kind of limited in that sense. Uh, you're also adding a lot of heavy rotational weight to your wheel. This may make it difficult to actually pedal the bike without electric assist. So let's say your battery dies, um, that could be a drawback and it could also throw off the balance of your bike. So, um, the mid drive tends to contain all the weight in the center of the bike but the hub motor has everything on the wheels. And uh, uh, I think in the case of a hand cycle, it shouldn't be too bad. The, there's three wheels, so it's not like I'm moving and leaning from side to side that much, but um, time will tell and I'll definitely keep you posted on how, how good of, uh, or how much of an impact um, the, the a heavy hub motor may have. Uh, so in the next video, I'll be talking about the different types of hub motors. Um, uh, uh, but I also wanted to point you to one other page. Um, this is on the uh, Grin uh, technology website, ebikes.ca. This is a, a really phenomenal site that has uh, a massive amount of information where you could learn about batteries and hub motors and um, a whole, whole bunch of different things and buy different DIY kits. Uh, they have this one page specifically 
um, uh, detailing the benefits of hub motors, which a lot of which I went over, um, you know, better reliability, uh, regenerative braking. Um, for those that care, I didn't that much. Uh, you could have a, a, a significantly higher peak power. I've seen bikes with 10,000 watts of power. Um, you, 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 you can't put that much more power than maybe 750 watts through uh, a chain. Otherwise, the chain will just snap. Um, and, you know, you could have torque sensors and pedal assist sensors that plug into the controller that you're going to have with your kit. And as I mentioned, this is actually fairly important. It makes the, the electric motor respond to the way that you're biking. So if you're uh, biking hard, the motor will work harder to help you, uh, which is really nice. And uh, yeah, one other big benefit is this the simplicity in terms of not having to worry about shifting. Uh, when the mid-drive motor is engaged, you do have to worry about shifting. And I think there are specific sensors that will actually turn off the motor momentarily when you shift. Otherwise, you can you know, chip teeth on your gears and maybe break a derailleur um, if there's that much more stress going through um, your, your, your drivetrain system uh, while you're shifting. Um, so that kind of concludes the benefits of hub motors versus mid-drives. Uh, mainly it's the robustness that made me go for a hub motor. And in the next video, I'll discuss uh, why I ended up going with a direct drive motor versus a gear motor. So stay tuned.